just discuss a new poem today on page number 41 the voice of the rain okay this poem has been written by walter walt whitman who was born in the year 1800 and uh, he was born on 31st of may 1819 and he died on march 26 1892 and he is considered to be the greatest and the most influential poet what do you understand by influential it's a great influential poet united states has ever produced so he was born in usa and uh, he's said to have invented contemporary american literature as a genre and he's also known for innovation in verse form that is use of free verse can anyone just tell from the word what is free verse if you just hear of this term free verse what could it mean ma'am there is yes akriti free verse kya ho sakta hai uh ma'am there is no rhyming like no rhyme scheme is there in the poem it's just written randomly uh, yes not uh, following a particular rhyme scheme that is free verse okay so it's a kind of a, this poem is a kind of a, can we say voice of the rain it's a kind of a dialogue dialogue kya hota hai do logon ke beech mein aapas mein aap baat chalti it's a conversation between rain and the poet the poet okay so i'll just read it and then we'll do the explanation He says, "And who art thou?" said I to the soft falling shower, which, strange to tell, gave me an answer as here translated. I am the poem of the earth," said the voice of the rain. Eternal, I rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea. Upward to heaven, whence vaguely formed. All together changed, and yet the same. I descend to lave the drops, atomies, dust layers of the globe, and all that in them, without me, were seeds only, latent, unborn, and forever. I give back life to my own origin, and make pure and beautify it. For song. Issuing from its birthplace after fulfilment, wandering, wrecked or unwrecked, duly with love returns. So I just told you this poem is a kind of a dialogue that takes place between whom? Between the poet and the poet and the rain. Rain. Where rain calls itself as the poem of the earth. ठीक है वो क्या कह रही है that I am the who am who am I? I am poem of the earth and it explains its life cycle. Now, from your third, fourth standard onwards, you have been reading. You have been studying about water cycle. Okay, so this water cycle has been explained in a poetic form here. Okay, so it says uh, the poet asks, and when you when you hear when you read this uh, title, the voice of the rain. You know, this is an example of which poetic device, which literary device, voice of the rain. जब मैं पढ़ती हूँ personification. ठीक है Voice is a characteristic which is attributed to human beings. ठीक है? Rain can have sound, okay, but it cannot have voice. So when we are giving some human trait to an inanimate object, it is personification. ये person का कोई trait है, voice इंसानों में होती है, rain में नहीं होती, ठीक है? वो हम किसी non-living thing को जब देते हैं, तो या किसी animal को भी देते हैं. ठीक है वो तो लिविंग है पर वो ह्यूमन से है ना तो कोई भी ह्यूमन का पर्सनिफिकेशन पर्सन से आया कोई भी ह्यूमन कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ट्रेट हम किसी नॉन लिविंग चीज को देते हैं तो वो उस पोइटिक डिवाइस को क्या बोलते हैं पर्सनिफिकेशन ठीक है सो इट्स अ पर्सनिफिकेशन इन द वेरी इन द टाइटल ऑफ द पोएम एंड द पोएट आस्क्स द रेन अ क्वेश्चन ही सेज एंड हु आर दाउ नाउ यू फाइंड वेरियस वर्ड्स इन दिस पोएम व्हिच आर नो लोंगर यूज्ड and those words are known as archaic words and what are archaic bachche awaaz aa rahi hai aapko online students yes ma'am theek hai so there are archaic words what are archaic a r you can write down the spellings a r c h a i c a r c h a i c archaic theek hai unko obsolete words bhi bolte hain archaic words bhi bolte hain wo words kaun se hote hain wo words wo hain jo hum aaj no ab nahi use karte Which are no longer used. वो पहले यूज किया करते थे जैसे यहाँ पर क्या है आर्ट आर्ट हम आर्ट नहीं यूज करते हम क्या यूज करते हैं आर्ट 
ए आर ई तो यहाँ पे पहले आर को क्या बोला जाता था आर्ट दाओ यू ठीक है यू को क्या बोला जाता था पहले दाओ ठीक है मेनी पोएट्स शेक्सपियर if you if you would be reading Shakespeare later on you would see that there would be use of many archaic obsolete words there okay so he says who art thou said I to the soft falling shower so the poet is putting up a question to whom to the rain, rain. so why does he call it a soft falling shower light rain or you know you can say drizzling this is a and uh, when and they have a very soothing effect they fall very gently okay zyada nahi matlab ek to rain ki awaaz hoti hai na pitter patter ho gaya pitter patter ho gaya wo tez tez se barish hui wo nahi so it is drizzling the soft falling shower and it is uh, very uh, you know soothing for your ears kaan sunna aapko acha lagta hai theek hai it is welcome to your ears it is not jarring to your ears so he says which strange to tell so what was strange to tell उसने क्या किया है उसको ट्रांसलेट किया है हमारे लिए फॉर द रीडर्स ठीक है सो रेन क्या बोल रही है Said the voice of the rain. So, मैं क्या हूँ? Poem क्या होती है? रचना. हाँ जी, कोई रचना, कोई कविता, ठीक है? तो वो and it is it is calling itself as the poem of the earth. Said the voice of the rain. Eternal. What do you understand by eternal? Something just permanent. Something which never dies. Which continues, which goes on forever. ठीक है, it cannot be felt it cannot be touched why because when the water evaporates it it is in the form of vapors and you cannot touch the vapors okay you cannot see them vaporous state jo hai wo aap usko touch nahi kar impalpable eternal it is unperceived by the onlookers wo dekh nahi sakte hain usko vaporous state ko theek hai aapko nahi dikh raha ki nadiyon se land se pani evaporate ho raha hai aapko evaporate ho raha hai dikhta kaise pani evaporate ho upar ja raha hai nahi dikhta na ठीक है, so it is unperceived by the onlookers. So it is eternal. I rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea. Out of the land, land से पानी evaporate होता है. और कहाँ से evaporate होता है? जितने भी हमारी water bodies हैं, water bodies से evaporate होता है. So but he is saying, uh, he is saying that bottomless sea. You know, कोई भी sea हो, कितनी भी गहरी हो, उसका कहीं ना कहीं bottom तो होगा. ठीक है? ठीक है, वो ये कहना चाह रहा है कि बहुत गहरी, बहुत गहरा sea. ठीक है ना ओके वी एग्री टू इट बट कितना भी गहरा होगा उसका कहीं ना कहीं बॉटम तो आएगा ना होगा ना सो दिस इज अंड ऑफ दिस डिवाइस इज नोन एज हाइपर बोल वेन यू वेन पोएट्स एग्जैजरेट सर्टन थिंग्स एग्जैजरेशन को क्या बोलते हैं हाइपर बोल सो यू कैन राइट इट सो वेन ही सेज आउट ऑफ द बॉटम लेस सी इट इज वॉट इट इज हाइपर बोल एच वाई पी ई आर बी ओ एल ई विच इज in simple words exaggeration so he is exaggerating things here that is why he is saying bottomless sea what it maybe it has a great the sea has a great depth par kitni bhi depth ho kitni bhi gehrai ho kabhi to jaake khatam hogi aur uska bottom aayega so bottomless ka matlab uska bottom hai hi nahi aisa to nahi ho sakta theek hai so that is why we can say that he is exaggerating theek hai ye kehne ke liye ki bahut gehri hai usne ye keh diya ki wo bottomless hai samajh gaye Okay, so if you are asked that what poetic device has, what literary device has the poet used in these lines, so you will say hyperbole, and you will say bottomless sea is an example of hyperbole. ठीक है? ये इतना समझ में आ गया आपको सबको? ठीक है? ठीक है? So and it says upwards to heaven, rain कैसे जाती है? In the form of vapors. Evaporation होता है ना process? कहाँ जाती है? Towards the sky. Upwards to heaven. Uh, vents. Vents है from where? Vents from where? जहाँ से? 
दिस इज अगेन एंड आर के कोड ठीक है हमने ये यूज करते हैं अब uh, और वो क्या बोल रही है आई राइज अपवर्ड फ्रॉम देयर और वहां से क्या होता है वेगली फॉर्म ऑल टूगेदर चेंज एंड येट द सेम वेगली फॉर्म मतलब वो क्या फॉर्म कर देती है वहां पे जाके क्लाउड्स क्लाउड्स अलग अलग शेप में होते हैं दे नॉट वेरी क्लियर शेप ना अलग अलग वेग सी शेप शेप होती है उनके ठीक है इन डिस्टिंक्ट शेप ऑफ द क्लाउड्स ऑल टूगेदर चेंज एंड येट द सेम व्हाट डज ही मीन बाय दिस दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट लाइन व्हेन ही सेज ऑल टूगेदर चेंज एंड येट द सेम इट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड दिस इज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ जब मैं बोल रही हूं ऑल टूगेदर चेंज एंड येट द सेम this is an example of another literary device another poetic device which is known as oxymoron you can write it o x y m o r o n so what is oxymoron oxymoron is when two contradictory words are placed together in the same line theek hai do bilkul opposite words hai jo bilkul opposite in meaning hai wo humne ek ke baad ek ek hi line mein place kar diya to wo kaun sa poetic device hua oxymoron तो ये ऑक्सीमोरॉन कैसे है क्योंकि मैं बोल रही हूँ ऑल टूगेदर चेंज एंड येट द सेम चेंज भी है बिल्कुल और सेम भी है तो चेंज और सेम दीज आर कॉन्ट्रोडिक्टरी वर्ड्स एंड देर प्लेस टूगेदर इन द सेम लाइन सो द पोइटिक डिवाइस यूज हेयर इज ऑक्सीमोरॉन ठीक है तो ये ये कैसे है हाउ इज द रेन सेइंग दैट इट इज ऑल टूगेदर चेंज एंड येट द सेम This still a form of water. Yes, very uh, important and very uh, useful. This point is that when rain loses its liquidity, ठीक है जब rain अपनी liquid form को lose करती है किस form में आ जाती है vaporous form में ठीक है तो बिल्कुल उसका different character है उसकी बिल्कुल different look है पर vapors और चाहे वो gaseous form है चाहे वो liquid form है ये है तो किसका form water का है ठीक है सो देट एंड दे कैन बी ट्रांसफॉर्म इन टू इच अदर एक दूसरे में चेंज हो सकते हैं ठीक है तो इसलिए इट दे आर ऑल टुगेदर चेंज एंड गेट दिस हैव यू फॉलो ऑनलाइन स्टूडेंट्स ये समझ में आ गया आपको दिस इज एन एग्जांपल ऑफ ऑक्सीमोरॉन सो देन सेज आई डिसेंड डिसेंड का मतलब क्या होता है धरती पर सूखा पड़ा हुआ है वहां पे पानी आ जाता है एटमीज मीन्स वेरी टाइनी बहुत छोटे छोटे एटम्स पड़े हैं आपको साइंस में टेंथ तक तो सब साइंस पढ़ के आए ठीक है, so very tiny particles, dust layers of the globe, जो मिट्टी की परत है, पूरे ग्लोब पे बिछी होती है, उसको भी मैं क्या कर देती हूँ, साफ कर देती हूँ, ठीक है? Followed, so I descend to lay the drops, atomies, dust layers of the globe, and all that in them, without me, were seeds only latent unborn. अगर rainfall न हो, तो जो seeds हैं, जो अंदर हैं soil के they would remain latent only and they would not come out they would not jump, germinate into plants and flowers theek hai to wo latent rahenge what do you understand by latent hidden hidden inside yes and hidden, hidden and unborn theek hai matlab wo germinate nahi ho payenge kis mein plants mein so they would remain latent so it helps in the flowering of plants it helps in the germination of seeds it helps in removing the dust layers मतलब इट हेल्प्स टू रिमूव ब्रॉड्स इट डस सो मेनी थिंग्स ठीक है सो इट मेक्स एवरीथिंग अराउंड द ग्लोब ब्यूटीफुल ठीक है व्हाट इट एंड फॉरेवर बाय डे एंड नाइट आई गिव बैक लाइफ टू माय ओन ओरिजिन सो व्हाट डस इट डू डे एंड नाइट यस इट इज नाउ हियर एक्सप्लेनिंग द वाटर साइकिल ठीक है, I give back life to my own origin. क्या मतलब है giving life to your own origin मतलब? By once again rising skywards. दोबारा से evaporation की form में evaporation होगा, फिर condensation होगी, फिर precipitation होगी. ठीक है ना? Precipitation क्या है? Rainfall. Condensation. Clouds. Clouds. Formation. ठीक है? So uh, by once again rising skywards, 
in the form of vapors, it gives back, another life cycle gets started. So that is why it says, I give back life to my own origin. And I make and I purify it. How, how does it purify its own origin? Kaise? The pura environment kya ho jata hai? Saap ho jata hai. It gets bathed in the rain. The dust particles settle down. Ye humne pandi hai. Thikhe? Rising vapors. Also, they, are, they add to the beauty. Uh, appear to be more beautiful in the backdrop of uh, a clean earth, a green earth. Okay? So, it beautifies it. Itself. It makes it pure. It makes it more beautiful. For song issuing from its uh, birthplace after fulfillment, wandering wrecked or unwrecked duly with love returns. Okay? So, we have life cycle, the rain ke life cycle, ko pe kis se compare kiya hai? Song se. Here, the poet has compared the rain's life to the to that of a song. Or the rain ke life cycle or song ke beech mein kya comparison karta hai? Ka sakte ho? What is the comparison that the poet is trying to form between the cycle of a rain and that of a song? Song ke beech mein or rain ke life cycle mein Kya wo comparison bata raha hai? Wo yehi isi line mein bata raha hai. Issuing from its birth place after fulfillment, wandering. Wrecked or unwrecked duly with love return. Is ka matlab kya hai? Jaysay ki rain kis ke, form mein rise hoti hai pehle? In the form of? Vapors. Vapors and then it comes back. Vapors. To the earth. Thik hai? Chahe logo ko wo pasand hai. Chahe kuch logo bole wo hoi to raha. Barish hoi mujhe nahi pasand. Chahe logo ko achhi lage. Wo wapis aegi ho dobara se life cycle apna shumur kare. Aise hi. So, song starting from the point of its origin. Ek song ka point of origin kya hai? Or the soul of the poet. Waha se wo jayega, wo travel karega. Whether it is wrecked or unwrecked. Matlab, whether it is cared for or uncared for. Log parwa kare, na kare. Logo ko wo song achha lage, na achha lage. But it, its echo will be heard in the same place. Thikhe sab, kai log usko pasand karenge. Wo praise ki form mein poet ke paas, writer ke paas wapis aage. Okay, so here the poet is comparing the life cycle of rain to that of a song. Wrecked or unwrecked, what does it mean? Care like or like. Duly with love, with all the love that you feel after hearing a song or after witnessing a rainfall, it will return and another life cycle would start. And these two lines have been put in uh, within brackets. Okay, this, this can come as a question. जो पूरी आपकी पोएम है लास्ट की जो दो लाइंस हैं वो ब्रैकेट्स में हैं क्यों? Because they are they are part of observation of the poet. They are not a part of conversation between uh, rain and the poet. ठीक है ये conversation का पार्ट नहीं है ये पोएट का आफ्टर थॉट है. ठीक है ये observation है. ठीक है that is why things have been they are not uh, an inherent part of the conversation between poet and rainfall. So that is why things have been put within brackets. Got it? So this is the poem. The voice of the rain. I'll be asking a few questions and then uh, that will be all. Okay, let me see how much you have uh, followed. So there are two voices. Let's discuss the text two questions only. Text two questions first. There are two voices in the poem. Who do they belong to and which lines indicate this? Raise your hands online and offline students. Offline we have online. And you will also raise your hand. There are two voices in the poem. Who do they belong to and which lines indicate this? Batao. Ha. Online ne to mujhe answer de diya hai. Ab offline de diya hai. Unhoon likh diya hai. Haan ji. Thoda sa unchi bolna hai karne ka. Bol. Haan. And the two voices in the poem are the poet and of the rain. Mm -hmm. And this has been indicated from the first line itself. And who are those? Question mark said I to the soft falling shaft. And uh, the rain replies by saying I yeah. am the poem of the know. earth. Okay? So the two voices belong to the poet, not uh, not the author, uh, Ashish. Yahape author nahi hai, yahape kon hai? Poet hai. This is a poem, so we have poet. Okay? Author aapka fiction mein hoga, uh, stories mein hoga. Okay? Essays mein hoga, par yahape poet. Okay? Poet and the rain. And the poet asks a question, who art thou? And I am the poem of the earth, the rain replies in the voice of the earth. What does the phrase strange to tell mean? Strange to tell ka kya matlab hai, bachche, batao. Haan ji, either say, from this side. 
What do you mean by strange to tell? Riksha, strange to tell kya hai? I'm strange to tell means that the poet is so amazed by the answer of the rain that he cannot tell it. Yes. We can feel, uh, we can only feel what he, what it says. Yes, he can only feel what he uh, says and uh, this phrase, strange to tell, it just expresses the poet's surprise. surprise at the ability of the rain to speak. Okay, and uh, because here that rain, it is turning out to be like what? Like a? Again, you are writing author nahi hai beta, poet hai, author ko hatao, poet ko lekar hao. Thik hai, author nahi hai yaha pe, yaha pe kaun hai? Yaha pe poet hai. So the rain here, which is very, uh, you know, surprising and it is very contrary to the general belief that the rain is behaving like a living being and it is giving an answer. So therefore the reader would also find it very surprising, reader ko bhi bada ajeeb lagega ye that rain is giving an answer. So therefore, he is saying strange to tell. There is a parallel that is drawn between rain and music. Which words indicate this and explain the similarity between the two? Kin dono ke beech mein similarity batani hai? We have to tell the similarity between music and uh, rain. Which are the expressions, which are the lines which tell you that there is a parallel between Madhuri Bate Bandhu? Parallel between rain and music. Kaun se expressions hai, kaun se phrases hai, jo aapko ye batate hai, ki in dono ke beech mein parallel hai. Last Yes. Bolo. So bracket lines hai, thik hai, last wale do lines hai. Song issuing from its birthplace after fulfillment wandering. Wrecked or unwrecked duly with love returns. Ye bhi hai. Phir voice of the rain hai. Phir aapka poem of the hour. Thik hai? Ye sari expressions kya hai bita rahe aapko? Similarity. 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 Thik hai? In dono ke beech mein kya similarity hai? Both have rhythm. Song or music do. Usme bhi rhythm hai. Rainfall. Kaiyo ko to jarring lagti hai. Pa kaiyo ko usme bhi music sunai deta hai. Thik hai na? So it has both have music. Both have rhythm. Both have the ability to soothe you. Both have the ability to beautify life. Both have the ability to rejuvenate life. Both have a thrilling, give, they give you a thrilling experience. So these are the similarities and both have a cycle. Very, very important. Both have a cyclic life. Don't know why life cycle hai. Thik hai na? So this is how you can draw a comparison. Similarity. How is the cyclic movement of the rain brought out in the poem? Compare it with what you have learned in science. Why is cyclic movement? How do you know what is Water cycle. That rain rises from land and it uh, rises from sea. In which form? Kis form de beta? In the form of gaseous form in form of vapors. Then it changes into clouds. Which have vague forms. In this way, it's a shape for Kinti. These clouds then, they come down, they descend on the earth in the form of rain. Only to rise up again in the form of vapors. Okay? And then the cyclic movement of the rain continues. So scientific, we have science in the science water cycle. And it includes the processes of uh, evaporation, condensation, precipitation. Transpiration, what is it? Plant cells. Okay, when plant cells have evaporation, it is the transpiration of the water. What is it? Transpiration. Okay? Okay. Why are the last two lines put within brackets? I have told you. They are the observation, they are the afterthought of the poet. They are uh, not the integral part of the conversation between the rain and the Okay. List the pairs of opposites found in the book. Day and night. Plant C. Yes, rise, descend. Very good. Or, or kya hai? Speak up. Um, day and night. Yeah. Sneha, sneha, sneha. Correct. Sneha, um, day and night. Day and night. Rise, descend. Or? Wrecked, unwrecked. Wrecked, unwrecked. Or, bolo. Arni, aap bol rahe the? No, I'm going to go ahead. Let's see. Land and sea. Land and sea. Okay? So these are the 
these are pairs of opposites. Next. Next question says. If you want to write, you know, if you have to write these sentences in prose form, they say, we fiction in fiction, in the chapter, this is poetry, right? So, if you write prose form in the chapter, then you don't have to explain prose form, 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 then you don't have to said the voice of the rain. The voice of the rain. Me and the voice of the rain introduced itself at the point. Harshvardhan, Harshvardhan. Speak up, Harshvardhan, online soon. The voice of the rain introduced itself as the poem of the earth. Yes, introduced itself saying that it is the poem of the earth. Eternal I rise. I rise eternally. I rise eternally. I keep on rising forever. Okay? And for song, do you believe with love returns? These are the last two lines and you can explain these. Okay, so this is uh, what this poem is all about. I'll be sharing an assignment with you, which would include some uh, extra questions. So you have to complete those extra questions plus these textbook questions, which we've already discussed. And you have to send that to me by Friday. Tomorrow is Wednesday, Friday is the Okay, so this is all as far as this poem is concerned. Tomorrow is a holiday, so there won't be any online or offline class. Please don't laugh at me. So uh, that is all for today. I'll just move on to your attendance part.